Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, so I spoke with the Prime Minister today. I uh, thanked him and acknowledged the comments that he made this morning when he said that the pipeline will be built. I also told him that he needs to do more. BC's actions are unconstitutional. This is not a dispute between BC and Alberta. It is a dispute between BC and Canada. BC isn't just taking a run at working people in Alberta and in BC. They are taking a run at the authority of the federal government. And in so doing, they are standing in the way of jobs that are not only well-paying, but are badly needed here in Alberta and throughout the country. On top of that, BC is making investors across the world question Canada. That means less investment and fewer jobs. So, I told the Prime Minister that we need the full weight, the full weight of the federal government behind all Canadians. And the full weight of the federal government behind the laws of the land. In the meantime, I want everyone to know that the government of Alberta is standing up for working people here in the province of Alberta and across Canada. As you know, our cabinet held an emergency meeting yesterday to discuss our options. And so today I'd like to let you know that as a first step, I am sending a letter to the Premier of BC to advise him that we have formally suspended all talks to do with the purchasing of electricity from BC through existing interties. These are purchases that had these discussions been completed would have contributed up to $500 million per year to British Columbia, and they do not include any discussion of purchases related to Site C, which we will have more to say about later. This is just a first step. In the coming days and weeks, there may be more. We are prepared to do what it takes to get this pipeline built, whatever it takes. But in the meantime, and instead, the federal government can intervene. They can put an end to this conflict. They can put an end to this undue delay and costly uncertainty. They can assure us and all Canadians that this federally approved project that is in the best interest of Canada and in the best economic interest of all working Canadians will be built. They can commit specifically to the tools that they will use to make sure that this happens. That's all we're asking, that they do this and that we get on with the job of helping working people get back to work. We need to end the games. We need to end the games that are taking place at the expense of regular families. And we need to start acting like a country again. Let me, sure, let me assure all Albertans and all Canadians that Alberta is standing up for you. Thank you. Premier, what do you mean by the full weight of the federal government? What exactly do you want them to do? Mm -hmm. Well, as a starting point, we need them to assert very clearly that there is one government in the country that gets to make a decision about what goes into pipelines that cross borders and go to, uh, to ports. That government is the federal government. The BC government has no ability to make regulations or anything else about what goes in those pipelines. And the federal government needs to make that very clear um, and uh, make it very clear to the BC government as well as to investors that under no circumstances will the BC government be allowed to either threaten or otherwise uh, impact what goes into pipelines. And how do you want them to do that? Do you want a statement from the Prime Minister? Do you want them to stand up and meeting with Horkin? What, uh, how do you envision this playing out? I envision the, pre the Prime Minister doing exactly what the Prime Minister often does, which is getting up and making a very clear statement uh, about his uh, views and his intentions on he it. This morning he said this pipeline will be built. This is in the national interest. Pretty he did do forward. that, but I think we need more clarity. Uh, we need more clarity about their authority. We also need more clarity about the current pipeline because uh, what BC is talking about is not just the future pipeline, it's also talking about regulating what goes into the pipeline that has been in place for over 50 years. So Premier John Horgan about an hour ago came out and said, well, I'm not sure what the big hubbub is in Alberta. All we're doing is looking at regulations and we're well within our right to do so. So it doesn't look like he's backing down. Uh, that may well be true. They're well within their right to look at regulations around uh, preventing spills, 
cleaning up spills, coming up with ma uh, best practices to, to do the best job around uh, that issue. Uh, they are not entitled to make regulations about what is in the pipeline. That is something that is well beyond their scope of authority. And uh, so I disagree. Uh, I think, frankly, that they know uh, that they don't have the ability to do that. Uh, but this is about uh, playing games. And uh, that needs to stop. Are they trying to go to into a court fight? Oh, I, I don't think that that's the case. I mean, we've already indicated that we're quite prepared to, to have fights in court. We've already been doing it. Um, I suspect there will be more, and we'll have more to say on that in the, in the days to come. But uh, um, the point here is that uh, this kind of uncertainty is bad for investors. It's in bad, and it's bad for, for working people. We have a $30... Uh, a barrel differential right now in Alberta, and it is clearly linked to our ability to get access to markets and to get pipeline capacity. It is enough is enough. We need to get these things built. On the issue of uh, Morgan, you talked to him, didn't you? You've talked to him mm -hmm. on the phone yesterday, I believe. So what was that like? You know, you've spelled out your position, and he's saying you don't. He, he spelled out his position. Mm -hmm. What was it, the discussion like? It was not dissimilar from what you've just heard from me. Uh, I made the points uh, that I made. I walked him through uh, uh, what it was that, uh, that um, they had uh, laid out, where we agreed with them in terms of uh, our support for them to ensure safety at every, at every uh, possible place and, and our support for that. And then I also outlined the part of what uh, uh, George Heyman was proposing that was uh, problematic for us and why it was problematic for us and, and why we couldn't accept it. And I let him know that um, that uh, this was not uh, the end of it, that, that we could not allow that piece to, to stand. Just to follow up on that, uh, a few weeks ago, you know, you had Jason Kenney uh, talking about consequences to BC, and you accused him of wanting to build a wall around mm -hmm. Alberta. And now he's saying that you're following his playbook. It does sound like you are following his playbook from a few weeks ago about getting tough with BC. Uh, no, I think there would be differences. I mean, the kinds of things that Mr. Kenny uh, is proposing and, in fact, was proposing today is akin to uh, cutting off your face to spite your nose. Uh, it's something that uh, the industry doesn't want and something that would actually hurt Albertans. Uh, and so that's not what we are doing. Uh, moreover, what we are responding to right now is a very concrete issue that developed uh, within the last 48 hours. And so we are going to, to respond rationally and, and uh, proportionately to what we see happening, and we're going to do so with tools that uh, um, are actually sharp. And then did you tell the Prime Minister you want him to be more clear, mm -hmm. not just make a comment this morning, you want him to actually uh, spell out the fact he is in, in, in charge on this. Mm -hmm. and what did you say to that? Well, um, as, again, as I say, what I said to the Prime Minister is that he needs to show um, a greater and clearer leadership on this. Uh, he re uh, reassured me that they are very committed to getting this pipeline uh, uh, done. Uh, he uh, took into consideration uh, or indicated he would take into consideration my my points on the matter, and uh, that's where, where we left the conversation. But uh, I also made it very clear that I would be calling on them to, uh, to turn up the dial a little bit here uh, as far as it relates to representing not only the interests of Albertans, but quite frankly, this is not an Alberta BC issue, and I made that very clear. This is not an Alberta BC issue. This is a Canada BC issue. So you're calling for the Prime Minister to be more tough talk, be more, more direct with BC. If that doesn't work, I mean, you've brought out a bigger stick and we're not going to talk power until this mm -hmm. gets settled. Do you want the Prime Minister to look at maybe big stick items as well? I mean, tough talk, I'm not sure how far that's going to go. He did say that stuff this morning. Mm -hmm. Well, as I say, uh, I mean, I think it's up to the federal government to consider their options, and I know that they are looking at them. Uh, and so I'm not going to map out their strategy. We're, we're busily working on our own. Um, so, and, and that's what our job is to do. Uh, in the meantime, uh, what we are doing here today with respect to this first step around uh, uh, the suspension of talks around uh, the intertise um, is something that we're doing not only on behalf of Albertans, but quite frankly, all Canadians who want to see a federation that works effectively and that is able to present an economic environment that will uh, attract the kind of investment that will uh, promote the level of prosperity that all Canadians want to see. Have you been hoping to meet with the Prime Minister in person today since he's in town? Uh, no, we were, we were both uh, pretty busy, but I was uh, pleased to be able to have a good conversation with him on the phone.
Yeah. How long was your conversation? Oh, it was about half an hour. Well, and, and, and you said that um, the, the, the Prime Minister took your points, like he listened to whatever. So do you, what's your gut feeling as to how he's going to respond? You know, I'm going to let the Prime Minister uh, answer that question. Uh, you know, I, I think all I can do is make the case for Albertans and, and make the case that I believe is actually not just for Albertans but for all Canadians. Uh, and, you know, we are... Uh, obviously on the same page in this. The Prime Minister has already made it clear that this is a project that is in the, the national interest economically, and now the question is uh, um, how emphatically do we ensure that it happens so that the uncertainty that is being created by the game playing on the other side of those beautiful mountains uh, is not allowed to uh, actually result in uh, any kind of job losses. Do you have a timeline in mind as to what you want? Done at a certain time. Uh, not in. You mean with respect to the federal government? Uh, Anybody, yeah. <laughs> government of, you know, we want you to actually step up to the plate. What I would love, uh, and and yeah, I and you know, you you have what you want, and then you see what you get. But uh, what we need to see happen is that the BC government needs to uh, retract their assertions about their belief that they can pass regulations that limit uh, what and how much uh, um, petroleum products are in the pipelines that are currently approved that have, frankly, been in place for 50 years. That needs to uh, be retracted. Just going back to some of the points been raised by Kenny in the past and more recently about. Now, turning at the tap mm -hmm. uh, now and again to BC. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about that? Is that something you would, you would think? As I say, that's what I refer to when I talk about cutting off your face to spite your nose. That is something that it's the reverse of what people yeah. normally say because, in fact, it would hurt us more than it would hurt them. Uh, it, it's it's our industry. It would it would give uh, the environmentalists exactly what they want, and it's also it would it would reduce uh, the the. Um, uh, production and the prosperity of our industry. So uh, that's not a thing. We're going to go to the phone lines now. Operator, please put through the first caller. Thank you. The first question is from Eva Ferguson of the Calgary Herald. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Yes, hi. I'm just wondering if the Alberta government is considering slowing down in any way the amount of oil going to the lower mainland or putting tolls on natural gas from BC coming through Alberta? Um, again, uh, well, with respect to uh, products that are flowing to um, the lower mainland, uh, we know that, that what that does is that, that ultimately, uh, although it would uh, probably bump up prices for consumers in the lower mainland, it would also result in, in pretty significant uh, losses for for um, uh, companies and producers based here in Alberta. And so that's not something that we're uh, necessarily interested in doing uh, because it would, it would cause a lot of pain uh, to Albertans. And so what we are focused on is a variety of solutions and strategies that uh, um, um, don't hurt Albertans um, as we uh, put them in place, other than, of course, the, the kind of negative effect that, of course, happens when you end up with the, the uh, inability to engage in uh, mature trade relations that we're seeing right now. But um, nonetheless, uh, so our focus is on those kinds of things uh, that uh, make the point in BC without asking Albertans to uh, make big sacrifices. Do you have a follow-up, Eva? Yes, and, and what about um, some of the rumblings that we're hearing from uh, retailers and, and Albertans thinking about boycotting BC businesses? Well, you know, that's very interesting, and of course, uh, I think it's, there's no question that uh, Albertans are pretty united on this issue. They're pretty united on, on how they see uh, the role of this pipeline relating to their own family's stability and economic uh, certainty and prosperity. Uh, it's pretty uh, uh, unprecedented the degree to which you get alignment on these issues uh, in a province. And so uh, I'm not surprised to see that Albertans are f trying to find ways uh, that they can express their opinion about this uh, to uh, the government of BC and ultimately even, I suppose, to British Columbians. And uh, certainly our government is looking at uh, ways in which we might be able to provide additional tools uh, to Albertans who would like to engage in that activity um, uh, in a more um, uh, wholesale, wholesale way. Operator, please put through the next caller. Thank you. The next question is from Rick Bell of the Calgary Sun. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Premier. Hello. What would you say to those people who maybe expected a little something a little tougher today in your announcement. Uh, what would you say to people who say that you might not be tough enough? 
Well, I would say that uh, suspending talks on um, uh, a project that had the potential to uh, deliver um, up to half a billion dollars a year to BC Hydro is not not tough. And I would also say that uh, if being tough is just about getting your elbows out without any regard for the people whose livelihoods you are responsible for, um, then that's not the kind of tough that uh, Albertans need. What we need is strategic actions that uh, protect Albertans and their economic well-being while making the point to BC. And so just as a supplement, um, and where is the where is the talk of the, the court challenge? And if there were a court challenge, would it be just Alberta, or would be the or would it be the federal government and mm -hmm. Alberta? So uh, it's a good question. We uh, I, I don't have anything to say specifically today on on the legal actions that we're considering, but I will um, pretty soon. We are doing a very a wholesale look at it. There's no question that there are grounds for legal action, and we will be taking legal action. But we want to make sure that we uh, come up with the best legal strategy possible. So uh, when we have that queued up, we will be sure to uh, um, uh, let Albertans know. But uh, be rest assured that uh, we have our officials working on that um, uh, very uh, rigorously right now. Operator, please put through the next caller. Thank you. The next question is from Don Braid of the Calgary Herald. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Premier, I want if you could clarify if um, when you talk $500 million, you mentioned that this didn't include Site C. Could you please explain, like, is any of that $500 million cur money currently being paid? Um, are you talking about withdrawing some, some current payments, in other words, by canceling this? And um, maybe you could explain uh, the, site, the situation with Site C. And I have another question uh, after we're done here on uh, uh, another, another point here, if you don't mind. Yeah. That's a lot of questions. Um, basically, uh, what we're talking about is uh, conversations that uh, were uh, going on with respect to uh, enhancing the ability of BC to sell into our market through current and existing interties. So in the past, BC has uh, made up to uh, or a little over $125 million a year um, back in, I think, 2012, 2013. As a result of these relationships, that amount of money has actually dropped quite significantly over the last five years. Uh, we had been in conversations about um, increasing our access uh, to their power at certain times uh, through existing interties. And uh, the uh, projections for our from our energy officials is that over time, uh, that could have amounted to up to uh, 500 million per year. But it's a, it's a range. It depends a great deal on what electricity prices are. But easily... Uh, uh, you know, 200 million a year and up to 500. Um, but that's not something that had happened. It was something that they were in discussions on. It is completely separate uh, was, from uh, any conversations that, that around Site C. Site C. Yeah, it's completely separate from any conversations on Site C. As I said earlier, we will have more to say on where we're going with Site C. Uh, I'm not ready to uh, roll that out yet today. So, okay, so you haven't told them you're stopping the Site C talks? Uh, we will have more to say on Site C going forward. What is uh, today is just about the conversations around existing intertie and existing uh, uh, opportunities that BC had hoped to secure um, uh, in that area. Operator, please put through the next caller. Thank you. The next question is from Kevin Orland of Bloomberg. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, Premier. Why are you choosing this mechanism uh, to strike back at, at BC, and how are you uh, confident that this move won't hurt Alberta or raise power prices in the province? Uh, well, thank you. But, uh, the reason primarily is because at this point our market uh, is not dependent on access uh, to to that particular um, uh, source of power. Uh, as you know, we had a remarkably successful um, uh, um, rep just about a month ago with respect to wind energy, and uh, and we're planning to move forward on more of that going forward, um, as as well as uh, with natural gas prices being what they are, natural gas supply being what they are. Um, we are quite able to manage our electricity needs at this time. Um, so we, as I said before, are very much looking at things that, that uh, impact uh, BC without 
impacting Albertans. Um, and, and as you go down the line of, of things, you know, you, you, that, that ratio starts to go up. And, and so obviously we have to be very, very careful on that. But uh, that's the, the line of thinking that went into identifying this particular um, strategy. And, uh, uh, and because it's a lost opportunity, it's not a thing that, um, that anybody right now is, is uh, currently uh, relying on. All right, and what would it take for you to resume these talks, them dropping their opposition entirely, or what would you need to see before resuming these, these talks? We, uh, we are more than happy to uh, have them respect the rule of law and carry on uh, advocating their position as vigorously as they would like uh, within the courts on the basis of uh, uh, what is commonly understood to be the law, the rules, the appropriate forums. Uh, Asserting a, a right to essentially drive into the federal cabinet and start rewriting federal laws just so that they can spend time in court and and uh, waste time having people point out the obvious illegality of it, that's not playing by the rules. Operator, please put through the next caller. Yes, the next question is from Kelly Kreiderman of the Globe and Mail. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Hi there. I'm wondering if you feel abandoned by Ottawa as you <laughs> as you take this battle forward. Uh, I I I don't uh, sort of walk through my day with that uh, perspective one way or the other. Let me say that uh, I was pleased to be able to make the case uh, to the prime minister today that I, that they needed to uh, be stronger on this and push harder on it. I was. Uh, um, uh, communicating to the Prime Minister that which I have heard from a number of stakeholders already who want to see the federal government um, uh, be stronger on this. At the same time, I'm also very pleased that uh, the Prime Minister reaffirmed uh, their commitment to ensuring that the pipeline will be built. We just want to make sure that those people who uh, uh, are very concerned about it, which happens to include most Albertans, can see an actual path for that to happen. And uh, that's what the Prime Minister needs to uh, help us all out with. Follow up, Kelly? Does the fact that BC is only consulting on this regulation and isn't actually moving forward on anything as of yet, does that make your position more difficult, that it's, that it's uncertain what the BC government is planning to do in this regard? Um, not really, because they uh, took the uh, unprecedented and I would suggest uh, unwise step of laying out their belief that they can consult on regulations that they think they have the ability to implement that would actually govern what is in a interprovincial pipeline. And that's just not a thing that they get to do. We have one more caller on the line and then I'll come back to you, Graham. <laughs> Operator, please put through the next yes, the caller. Next question is from, thank you. The next question is from Don Braid of the Calgary Herald. Your line is open. Please go ahead. Uh, Premier, uh, there's a very big difference between you and the Premier and what was said today. He, he treated this dispute between you and BC uh, as if it was uh, some little really, really stupid thing like license plates. Uh, he basically dismissed it all as just the usual provincial squabbling. Um, and didn't uh, they've they've not yet said a word? Uh, and you're you're painting in much different light as a as a BC federal um, issue. Um, so I'm just wondering how you feel about that. They they and they haven't taken sides in any way. Haven't reflected or said anything negative of what BC has done here. Um. I think what uh, my view is, uh, so I'm sorry, are you asking what my view on, on, on what uh, the Premier of BC is saying or my view of what uh, the uh, uh, Prime Minister has said? Well, I'm talking about what the Prime Minister said mm -hmm. in the sense that he, he dismissed, it was very quite dismissive, I thought, uh, basically talking about it as if it's just your usual interprovincial squabbling and we are here in our lofty mm -hmm. perch are here to resolve these kinds of things. And, and didn't frame it the way you did at all as an issue that they have with BC. Indeed. Uh, I'm just wondering how you feel about that. That's a, that's a lo very big difference in attitude for sure. Uh, I, I think it's fair to say, Don, that that was probably how I led off my conversation with the Prime Minister. I made it very clear to him that uh, uh, I believe that he uh, was not appropriately characterizing the problem, uh, that in fact it is about BC versus the federal government, that uh, it's the equivalent of, as I said, BC driving into the uh, middle of a federal cabinet meeting and, um, and asserting its right to amend the criminal code. Um, and that uh, 
uh, basically, uh, it is not between BC and Alberta. It is BC, between the BC and the federal government, and uh, that uh, it w it was a very clear shot across the bow uh, with respect to uh, the. Uh, government of BC's belief that they have the ability to uh, make decisions about what goes into a pipeline that crosses provincial boundaries. They do not have that right. That is very clear. And so that is a matter that the federal government must respond to. So uh, the previous characterization that you describe, uh, Dawn, is one that I, I do take issue with, and I uh, made that very clear to the Prime Minister. Uh, Graham, last question before we wrap up. Two parts in this one question. <laughs> Okay, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still. Yeah, this going, the, what can Horgan? What is Horgan threatening to do in your mind? Because right now, BC doesn't have a meter looking all the oil and bitumen going through, and then deciding yes, you can pump this and you can't pump that in. Um, what is it he wants to physically do? Do you think? Well, you know, that's a very good question uh, because there is uh, obviously some some uh, good uh, some good discussion to be had about whether they actually have the ability the, to to regulate what's in pipelines, you know, practically speaking as as you uh, outline, but the the very assertion that they would develop regulations which uh, purport to put limit on the amount of uh, bitumen and dilbit that can go into a pipeline is a problem, and 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 it creates huge uncertainty, huge investor uncertainty, uh, and and were it allowed to stand, it would essentially mean uh, that uh, you know the country of Canada is not going to. Uh, um, be successful in terms of exporting um, our oil and gas anymore. So uh, the reality is, is that that's what they're purporting to do. Whether they have the ability to do it uh, is another interesting question, but uh, that's certainly not what the environment minister is saying. And uh, people who need to uh, get these things done listen to what uh, uh, ministers and premiers say. And so that's why we have a, a very significant problem with it. Question is, uh, you said if Premier Horgan is playing games on this whole thing. What do you mean by that? What's what do you mean by these playing games? What do you mean? Well, I think that they're, they are attempting to appear as though they are uh, finding a way to uh, limit uh, and, and to obstruct the uh, construction of this pipeline. And, um, and the problem is, is that uh, that is something that actually has a real impact on the, uh, the jobs and the economic security of real people. And uh, it, it's just not something that we can tolerate. So he's playing games with it. Is that in the Green Party then, the tail wag the NDP dog? I, I'm not going to engage in, uh, in um, uh, you know, speculation about what exactly the political uh, uh, stuff is. But uh, all... No, I just said that the, the two of them were together uh, generally opposed to the pipeline. But the reality is, I don't know what the intrigue is. All I know is that there are real jobs and real families who are impacted by this. And that there are there is a real law, it's called the Constitution, and in, that is something that governs a real country, that is Canada. And we need to ensure that we think about the people we are elected to represent, and those are those real families who are looking for those real jobs. That's it. And did you speak to Kendra Morgan? Uh, oh, we've been having ongoing conversations with with uh, uh, Kinder Morgan as well as the shippers, as well as a uh, you know a, a number of different stakeholders who are impacted by all this. They're they're concerned. They're troubled, as they should be. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.